Hey, uh, welcome back to Dukes on Twitch. Uh, back today with something a little bit special. This is a legacy prelim with uh, Interplay. Tony, how's it going? It's good. I'm going well. How are you doing? Good. Uh, so yeah, for this, I thought we could just go back over our match uh, and yeah, talk through some of my lines, uh, why I kind of did them against you. Uh, obviously, knowing or 99% knowing that you're on mono green cloud post. Um, yeah. Because yeah, I thought it was a really interesting match. Uh, a lot of different sort of uh, points to it where things could have gone differently or decisions could have been made otherwise. But uh, yeah, how do you in general find the sort of depths matchups? Uh, I find them enjoyable. Just like any land-based matchups I find to be like pretty even, but also like pretty fun. Just lots of interaction between the two sides. And like green-white depths is exactly like one of those kinds of land-based decks. Yeah, especially from your end, having things like Thespian Stage, Glacial Chasm, Caracas, it is a bit of a, a little bit of maneuvering is needed to get around those effects. Exactly, yeah. This, um, uh, anytime, like, 2020s are involved, I feel like I'm kind of, like, walking on thin ice. Although, uh, Green White Depths does have, like, is a little bit more difficult than lands, I'd say, because of the presence of Knight of the Reliquary, which just, uh... Being able to tutor up like wastelands every turn is makes Knight like one of the worst possible cards you could fight against as Cloud Boost. Yeah, for sure. Um, I assume that like the main deck Pity Needles help, but you obviously need to find them first. Uh, and a lot of the Knight decks do play uh, Mana Accelerants, so Knight can come down as early as turn two. So, you know, having to find that sort of needle effect or maybe like hold up crop rotation as early as turn three is, yeah, it's pretty tough. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, usually my game plan from the other end is uh, just to try and get to like a green sun for six or a hard cast prime time like as fast as possible, which will mean sometimes being risky, but like just trying to close the game out as quickly as possible is usually like my top priority against the deck. Yeah, I can I can definitely understand that. Uh, <laughs> so we were on the play, which is really nice, and the seven was pretty good. Uh, we have uh, three lands and a mox, so we can definitely ditch one. Uh, and then we have, with the Mox and Windswept Teeth, we have both colors. Stage gives us a copy of one half of the combo. Ramanap allows us to get back the card Disadvantage of Mox Diamond um, as early as turn three, which is nice. Uh, and then Green Suns can find anything from Knight of the Reliquary to uh, Reclaimer to go and find a Wasteland, uh, or perhaps go for something like Knight of Autumn for like an early uh, Pithy Needle if we hit uh, Wasteland of our draws. And then Source Supply Shares for like an early uh, Elvish Reclaimer is really nice. So I feel like this hand has a lot going for it, which is pretty good. It looks really solid. Um, so I believe... Yeah, I never knew exactly what the buttons do. Okay. So yeah, it's just like playing through your turn, the first one. Yeah, so I think we... Uh, actually, here I Green Sun straight away for Dried Arbor. Um... Oh, sorry, no, yeah, we, we go for turn one Reclaimer. Uh, mainly because I knew it was going to be uh, Depths. I wanted to try to get online Wasteland as soon as possible. Um, yeah. And with that Reclaimer locket, it, it felt pretty good. I think that's the right decision, for sure. Um, and then Plus you have, you like, the Excavator to, like... Uh, yeah. Plus you have the Excavator to, like, also continuously, like, Wasteland. Which I, I like that, too. Yeah, exactly. Um, or even something like, if I get staged down this turn, we can start sort of copying Wasteland before we Wasteland, if needed, um, to get those like uh -oh. two effects into play. But Yeah. Yeah, here we're in a pretty good spot. Um, oh, sorry. I just used the... Uh, <laughs> these buttons I'm going to get used to. Um, oh, so yeah. we, we Swords the Reclaimer, and then just pass with Reclaimer open. Um, the other play was Do to I... just play Remnant. But I think getting rid of the Reclaimer there is priority before you get to untap with it. I agree. I was going to ask, like, do you find opponents, like, do they just, like, remove your Reclaimer, like, ASAP before you, before you get to untap with it? Is that, is that like, something yeah. that happens to you? Yeah, I think most uh, think about Sejiri Step pretty, uh, pretty quickly. Um, or any sort of, like, crop rotation into Sejiri Step sort of play. Um, and also just getting the value off it. Most most players get rid of it. Um, Against okay, the yeah. the Delver decks that have Bolt, a lot of the time I'll try to wait on Reclaimer until it's a 3-4 to play it out. Um, it's not often that I'll hold up 
sort of a, a, a pl or play a turn one reclaimer unless I can do something like uh play a mox play a uh, a land and reclaimer and hold up crop rotation. Oh, okay. Yeah, but, I just wasn't sure if it was like unique to me or like reclaimers just always targeted immediately, but it seems pretty likely that like that would yeah. happen to decks like depths. I feel like it's the new bolt the bird, especially with prismatic yeah. ending. There's so many answers to it. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so we untap. It's obviously your turn. You play a stage, which is pretty funny because now it's like, okay, well, that's turning off. Um, and I think here I use Reclaimer in response to Needle, just in case you name Reclaimer. I want to get some sort of play off it. And this also yeah. puts you in the position that if I find Wasteland, uh, you have to name either Wasteland or Reclaimer. But <laughs> knowing that I had Wasteland in hand and I kind of wanted to get some pressure on the board, I went for Saga, which was interesting. No, I think it's... Uh, so like for my end, I figured you'd use the reclaimer when I cast the needle, but like I was just immediately committed to naming wasteland, just like yeah. almost by default, but expecting you to search up like a wasteland. Yep, yeah, no, that's fair enough. Especially when you kind of have dark depths covered in your own death Fiend stage, um, and if you have that covered and wasteland covered, then reclaimer isn't really doing too much other than maybe like doing some flagstone shenanigans. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was kind of surprised to see Saga, but like, I think it was uh, probably the right call. Yeah, it's always tough as well because the, the open forest to me always indicates crop rotation. <laughs> so even if I found a way to remove the needle here, I think I'll probably just wait till your upkeep to wasteland if I was going to wasteland. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we draw another stage. Uh, and I think he would just hold up the saga and I start getting in with the reclaimer because I feel like beatdowns is how I'm going to win this game. If you haven't started on a cloud post kind of start. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I'm kind of like spinning tires right now. And you could be swinging for like seven next turn with like two constructs. Yeah, exactly. Like saga. Uh, so Saga generally in green-white has been okay. I find a lot of the time there's just better things to be doing with my mana, uh, especially as a tap-out deck, than creating the Construct, um, which does dilute the power of Urza Saga. Um, you do play a few artifacts in Mox Diamond, and then I was playing two effects that I could find of Saga in Pithy Needle and Shadow Spear. Uh, both probably the, the most direct ones for the combo. Pith Needle to turn off Wasteland and Caracas, and then Shadow Spear to go over some of the like Thopter decks or Ice Fang decks. Um, okay. And even against some of the Delver decks, it's nice to have that kind of Lightning Helix effect of. It's on an Elvish Reclaimer. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Which can really buy some time. But I've been playing Green Black Depths, which obviously in the past has been kind of more all in on the combo and didn't have much of a plan B. So to have Saga there as a plan B has been really nice and I've really liked it in, oh. in green black. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Have you tried it out at all in cloud post? Yeah, I've tried a couple of copies and like, I was, didn't think you, I kind of was skeptical about trying it just because like the only artifacts I have are like needles and maps, which are kind of just more like supplementary tools to the main game plan. And you usually don't want to like end up losing like a land drop the way Saga, you're going to lose it in two more turns. I figured like that'd be like too painful to lose the land that way, which yeah. I think it is too costly as far as like lands in this deck go. But also like the construct beatdown doesn't really come up with my deck all that often. I'm usually like always the one, and, like on the defensive. So yeah, yeah, I don't think it really belongs in my deck. Yep, that makes a lot of sense, especially when you're finishing with uh with Eldrazi. It doesn't really matter if your opponent's at like twenty life or or two life. It it, it, it kind of ends the same way. Exactly. Um, so I believe here in end step, you crop away the stage for a cloud post. Yeah. Uh -huh. And this is where I got worried. <laughs> I was like, oh no, here, here it comes. It's starting. I was really worried at this moment when I crop out of there, if you had a crop rotation of your own that you could go and make uh, like a dark depths, a 2020. Cause I was uh, like yeah. completely exposed at that moment. And like uh, I, by holding up the two mana here, I'm basically like at least have like the ability to make my own like merit lage, and at least like by like a single turn if that were to happen. 
Yeah, exactly. Uh, I had to. I had to get to this point where I had like the two mana with that cloud post plus the untapped stage, so that's why like I attempted to crop right the for the cloud post. To, uh, I I can't remember exactly, but like that's how it worked out to at least in my head. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair enough because you could uh you could make a twenty twenty to block my twenty twenty. Um, exactly. But thankfully, if I did have a crop rotation here, I could crop away the saga for dark depths use two mana to copy it and then when i untap i'll still have two mana left over in my turn including a land which means i could uh use the reclaimer to go and get sajiri step to give pro black to swing in oh yeah i don't but, know if i remembered that fact or not Probably but i'll need i need some pretty good cards there <laughs> um, <laughs> so end step we make a construct and then a nice little thing here is that with the saga trigger on the stack you can uh, sack the saga to um, reclaimer if you want, and then you still get to search as well. And you can do that for crop yeah. rotation as well. So just get some yeah. added value. But I felt like getting that beatdown strategy was better um, because you were off green mana at the moment, so I wasn't too worried about prime time being double green. So mm -hmm. I thought that there's potential of getting in for enough where even if you play a prime time, the other creatures are just going to get in for say six and and, and do it. Yeah, I like continuing the construct beat down there, and with the reclaimer as well. Um, so we have Shadow Spear and Pithy Needle as targets, and you do something really nice here. You copy your cloud post in response to the as a saga trigger in case I name Thespian Stage. Exactly. Yeah. And I I think we go for Needle on I just in case you have a. Um, I have Ugin, but that potentially could have been incorrect as well. I think I should have done the math on if you did play I next turn, like how much mana do you have to pump into I and then untap with? Like, is it just too slow for you that my beatdown strategy just works? But I didn't really um, have another another name. Uh, I always like the opponent. If I were the opponent, I'd always name like I have Ugin towards the end of the, uh, the game, just because that's like the only thing that's like really threatening to needle at that point yeah but like, the uh great. oh sorry no you go i think i was like too slow at I think that's just like the correct choice because like nothing else is really even worth naming at that point other than maybe like map but like map is like way too slow to stop the current like beat down you have going yeah my only other thought here is if you get shadow spear you have the two mana to equip which is plus two to the construct which means we could attack in for nine putting you to nine um and then the other construct would be uh pretty big as well uh which would nearly allow you to attack through a prime time next turn or one blocker because you put them to nine and then you'd construct would be a six six a five five and the reclaimer would be a three four so it's, mm. it's close i feel like that puts you down to one so I'm, i don't think that's good yeah. enough well, the more I think about it now, maybe like Shadow Spear would have actually been better because like I was probably too slow anyway at this point. Yeah, and I feel like the needle was a bit of a defensive play, whereas the Shadow Spear lines up with like me building the constructs, being a bit more aggressive with the Reclaimer. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I think I probably would have said ch or chosen Shadow Spear at that point. Because mm. yeah, the extra yeah, three just... damage is, is pretty huge, being an artifact and also the plus one plus one. Yeah, yeah. Because I could only search up next turn, and then it'd be another turn after that before I could cast a Eldrazi. Yeah. Yeah, so the, the Yavimaya, I didn't think of. Because I was like, there's no way he can get, they can get double green, right? But of course, Yavimaya allows you to, uh, <laughs> to do that pretty well. So I'm pretty it's sure yeah, it's just a, a big titan. How's uh, Yavimaya been as like a new card in Cloudpost? Oh, I love it. Like I saw it spoiled, and I was just like immediately thinking, like, "Oh, please don't be like a fake card that somebody just like made. Like, please be a real thing." <laughs> so that you would be like an instant staple. Yeah, it, it does seem really strong, especially in this scenario where you can just top deck it, and all your mana worries are like out out the out the door, or just have it in hand <laughs> and and wait for the last minute to play it. I feel like Green White Depths is probably the deck that most benefited from Yavimaya, though. Yeah, I think it's definitely uh, it definitely has bet up the turn and i think i just conceded here <laughs> because i, I just oh, didn't yeah. feel like i could get through um especially with the titans and the needle on i assume either thespian stage or reclaimer here 
but I'll just double check. Because oh, it, it is very tough to come back from here. I mean, we have the swords for prime time. You go up to 21, and then I'm still, you know, it's still down to two attacks. Mm. But to be fair, maybe preemptive, because um, we do have kind of like a two-turn clock. Even if we, I guess three-turn clock will be if we swords the, the titan. Um, but yeah, I don't remember what was in my hand, but like, since you had the Eye of Ugin locked already, it might not have been over. That might have been a premature concession. Mm. Not sure. Yeah. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're <right. laughs> Um, yeah. So I, I assume that's it. But yeah, I felt like we had ourselves in a, a a pretty good position going forward, and then the the prime time was tough because yeah, we also have to tap out because I'm probably keeping all my creatures. Um. Yeah, yeah. I would think so. Just continue that uh, that strategy you already mm. have. Do you you how many uh, once upon a times do you play? Uh, I played the full set. Yeah, nice. They're, like, okay. they're pretty much like a color fixer at the very start of the game, which I think like necessitates like wanting those because you want as like few of colored sources as possible that you can get away with in Cloud Boost. Mm. Yeah, but very uh, true. yeah, once upon a time is also just not the worst thing to be hard casting in that deck as well. Yeah, no, that's very nice. I'll quickly see um, how I boarded. I think if we go into uh, when you start the next game, you can right click and view sideboard as if you were like playing, and it'll show. Oh, nice! So I'll take a, yeah. a screenshot of my sideboard here. In and put it up against in trusty paint game two. Um, game two round three, nice. All right. So you brought Force of Vigor, which I like. Yes. So uh, we, if we put this over here. Um, so I traded away two swords for two parts, which might not be correct, especially on an early, uh, I, I did keep in the, I, w I wouldn't bring in the past unless you like really wanted the more removal. Like I think swords is just better because uh, I, I think ramping me is like no, into green is like basically is a little like too beneficial for me. Yeah, especially on an early reclaimer, I, I don't yeah, I definitely yeah. don't want to be doing that. Um, I think that might have just been a bit of a tunnel vision there where I didn't want to gain you the life on the primeval titan. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Like the bigger like the creature is, like obviously the. No, life gain is like significant. Just not sure how like uh, important it is to, uh, yeah. You know, like swords is sometimes has a drawback in depth decks because it puts them like above twenty life. Mm. So I'm not sure like how concerning that would be if you were to keep running swords, but uh, yeah, I can also it's... see like reason to bring the keep the pass in or bring them into as well, just because answering group labor is so important. But, yeah. Okay, so I would have kept in the swords and then added the parts on top. <laughs> um but no, i think with i think yeah sorry no all good i think with uh winning this matchup it's more about constricting you on allowing what you can do because i think you have a pretty good answer to duck depths which is why i took out two copies and left just one in in case there was a a chance we could go for the the 2020 um i like that the step as well i didn't really care for um i don't think it's going to come down to me being able to like step a creature through one of your ground creatures for the win um and I don't expect any sort of targeted removal from from you guys, other than like you know Ulamog, which is colorless. Yeah. Uh, do you run uh, a single copy of Step or two of them? I think I kept one in just to not go down on too many lands, um, mm. and like just in case that was something where you might have been at like twenty three life, and I could like attack in with a reclaimer with uh, with Dark Depths. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the bog, uh, I assume you play Ramanap, but I felt like that wasn't enough to keep the bog in. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, and then, yeah, Collector Oof, uh, I actually kept out. It only really hits maps, and I didn't think that was enough. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's worth it either. I, uh, I think I sided out the maps anyway, but even so, I don't think I'd, like, be at a point playing Depths where I would, like, green, two to green so seen it for, like, a Collector Oof at any point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, safekeeper out as well. Pretty much the same sort of uh, 
reasoning for, for step. You don't really have any targeted removal, but I don't really care about it. Mm. Um, and yeah, I did I like bring in the... Just... I did bring in the surgicals because Wasteland on, on Cloud Post is just like, I, I, I just want to be able to take you off Cloud Post, um, which I, yeah, I think it's I... kind of a, a win more sort of uh, situation with surgical, but I felt like it was just better than some of the things we were taking out anyway. Exactly, yeah. I, I would bring him in the surgicals over like those lands and I like also like moving away from the depths plan and just focusing on like the Knight of the Roller Quarries and beat down as well. I think that's correct. Yeah, exactly. I think uh, if I'm not going to win through the Dark Depths plan, it's really about just constricting your mana as much as possible and trying to not allow you to cast as much as, as you can, which actually goes against bringing in those paths for the swords. So I think in future, that's a, a pretty good learning curve to probably... Um... Yeah, 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 just don't bring in the pass. <laughs> um, my only thought was I did bring in the Prismatic Endings because they hit both Reclaimer and Pithy Needle, which is really nice. Oh yeah, definitely bring the endings in. I kind of hate that card now. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 just crazy how good it is, especially when you have anything from like a Mother of Runes to a like Sylvan Library to another Reliquary to like a Planeswalker. It's just ending it. Like it's like a really, yeah. really, really, really good Council's Judgment. Do you have uh, two of the main deck or one of them main as well? Uh, or is no, it just so two in the board. Yeah, just the two in the board, um, and just the four swords in the in the main deck to try to go kind of more all in on just the the combo plan game one, and then have more sort of reactive stuff in in the sideboard. But there are a lot of lists that run the the four main deck swords and two main deck endings, usually in the straight green white or green white red versions that aren't running saga, and then you kind of fit them in instead of your saga targets. And you have Mox Simon as well to help like hit other like CMCs, like three CMC stuff and all that. Yeah, exactly, nice. which is really nice can uh you can get the full five colors if you want <laughs> but nice. uh yeah i think the main things were we're really targeting pithing needle and uh your your mana base yeah i like the plan I like it nice so on the play again which is nice uh and this hand was an interesting one we have the combo we have a, a tapped land for prismatic ending and then a force of vigor which i just didn't really think was was the plan i think uh i really want to have a green source um especially a, a land that comes in tapped or untapped on on turn one um and luckily this deck does mulligan pretty well so yeah i don't know the like green white depth specific hands like how much you require like the green but it, it looks pretty sketchy <laughs> yeah so i believe we mulligan um and this hand isn't too bad i, I believe we dropped the shadow spear and we keep Forest, Wasteland, Saga, and then have two pieces of removal. We do have to find a white source for these, but we do have Reclaimer to find them. So outside of like, you know, Forest into Reclaimer, and then you play like Forest into Needle on Reclaimer, we're, we're looking not too bad. That looks really good. So I believe, yeah, we keep when we bottom Shadow Spear. Yeah, his hand looks really good against Post. I also like your choice of, uh, of basic lands. Oh yeah, I love uh, that was from Onslaught. I think my forest is from. Yeah, um, so this was a case of just I think wasteland cloud post because I didn't want to play around uh, crop rotation. Yeah, yeah, I like it. And then we just get in for the, the one with with reclaimer. Yeah, yeah, I had actually a pithing needle in the start of my hand and uh, the Vesuva to like copy the cloud post. So I was just praying that he didn't have didn't wasteland me like turn one. Which yeah, didn't turn out. <laughs> so flagstones here is probably one of the best draws because it's a a white source, but it's also a land that I can ramp with reclaimer, which is really nice. Yeah, yeah. Which allows me to kind of keep my white source, but also get a utility land if I need one. So like I think the, we uh... sack here and just go for wasteland. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. At least like force the issue with that needle to like have to be wasteland. Uh, I, no, obviously you have like the one hand still, but nice. We draw windswept heath. I believe here we uh play knight. Uh, we get to attack, but I yeah I I path here. Um, and the, the downside is that, uh, I could path in your draw step after you've drawn like a forest, but you have so many that I'm not going to like cut you off your forests by doing that. And I just yeah. didn't want that reclaimer to untap. 
Um, and oh, even yeah, though I'm giving you a land, if it turns into cloud posts, then I'm giving you more mana by letting you like keep it. Um, yeah, and I like getting rid of Reclaimer like immediately. There was a thought of using ending, but having the ending for the needle's really nice. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I was just hit the do what you did. I'm sorry, to remember you hit the needle and then just go to town, wastelanding. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so here you play Rex Age, um, which for me feels like a, a weakness. Like you're just trying to buy some time, um, which is yeah. pretty nice. At least what I thought. Um, so just now like while you're. A... Just as a blocker, really. Yeah. Um, so here, while you're tapped out, like being able to double wasteland you, or wasteland you once, and then have the the saga back up is is quite nice. Um, <laughs> and that's yeah, that's a pretty tough spot, and that's exactly where I want you to be. Like two cloud posts in the bin, reclaimer and knight online. Um, yeah, that's pretty brutal. <laughs> yeah, which like it just it just came together really nicely, which is great for us. And you just had a, a bit of a one of your like f like the the one mana producing land starts which can be pretty tough yeah yeah it's couldn't get it going um yeah yeah, yeah don't much more I, to say after the, the key thing was like when you wasteland in the first cloud first like after that it was just like on the back foot the entire game yeah is um like do you see many people bring in surgical against you i assume some like yeah. some of the like the blue decks perhaps yeah, Delver like always brings it in, so there's always a risk of. Uh, typically, I won't ever play Cloud Post out turn one unless there's like some, like high payoff for the high, the risk of it. But I know that's like always like a factor, like something that could happen. I just feel like I against like depths, I have to go over the top up all the way up to Eldrazi, and I, I surgical probably just wasn't even in my mind against you. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah. yeah. Nice. All right. Uh, game three, I don't believe I, I changed anything on the play or draw with my sideboarding. Um, this is a but crazy I probably should... game, remember? Yeah, it is a pretty crazy game. I should have thought more about those uh, those parts because... Yeah, I, I, I think my general thinking was that giving you the land is better than allowing you to have a reclaimer. But I, I don't think they should be switched out for swords. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, against post definitely keep the sword still yeah all right so you're on the play for game three uh and this hand is a, an interesting one it has like you know a bit of interaction in wasteland needle for something like map but again no colored mana and i feel that's where you just kind of you, you lose these sort of games where you don't keep a hand where you can actually cast your spells so i believe i'm oh, yeah. this and this one's pretty good um we have acceleration. We have some, uh, you know, a, a green sun to go and find something. Swords for interaction. Crop rotation for interaction. Um, and Yav's always an interesting one because I don't really want to give you green mana. So I think I, I might have thought about either dropping it, yeah, or dropping it to the mocks. Yeah, I like that. Green source. Nice. Reclaimer is just the ideal turn one play for Cloud Post. Yeah, it is It is very strong. <laughs> I'll give you that. <laughs> As you know. <laughs> hold up crop rotation. Ah, oh, no, that's right. So I was going to hold up the crop, but we could also green suns here for uh, Dried Arbor because I feel like the upside of drawing into Knight of the Reliquary and being able to cast it on turn two is just so much better. Oh, that makes sense. Um, instead of sort of waiting the turn because I, th I think the draws in this deck are pretty good, so I felt like I'd have something to do next turn anyway if I if I draw. Yeah, yeah. So you green suns yourself for Reclaimer. <laughs> yeah. And then Force of Vigor. Pretty good. Even as like the, the two for one, like not too bad. And then you also get the path here off the Reclaimer. Again, just because I, I kind of feel like giving you the extra forest isn't the worst. Like yeah. compared to an online Reclaimer. I actually debated Force of Vigoring on your end step at the previous turn. Because I did have it in hand. But I decided against it because whatever was in my hand, I think it was that green sun. I felt was too valuable. Hmm. So by switching up the Reclaimer that last turn, I was like... Man, hopefully he doesn't have like Swords of Plowshares path for this reclaimer. Just please don't have it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's tough because like 
looking back and especially with sideboarding, like those parts are copies of sword splashes. So if that was a sword splashes there, it's obviously just strictly better by not giving you that extra land. Yeah, yeah. Um, Sarg is a pretty nice pickup because it is um, a, a threat and also a little bit of uh, interaction. Yeah, yeah. So you just play stage and pass. Thinking if I probably consider it's Thespian stage copying your saga. I don't know if I ended up doing that or not. I feel so you're here. just gonna hold back and make a construct here, right? Yeah. Hold it crop edition. Yeah, which isn't the worst. It's obviously a pretty small construct, but you, you gotta start somewhere. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, here you go for a. Uh the stage copy, and I just allow this to happen. Yeah, okay. I remember this now. It's always so slow, though, getting the tokens, the uh, the chapter tokens when you stage it. it yeah. Starts at zero, and then... That's very true. So Primetime goes to hand, and we know about it, which is pretty tough. Yeah. And then another green suns for a claimer. Which is pretty strong. I don't want to make the uh the path here. Uh we draw into knight, which is pretty nice. Um so I believe what we do is with the trigger on the stack of saga, we crop rotate it away to go and get a white source for the knight. Oh yeah, that seems really good. Uh and then with the trigger, we get needle to name reclaimer. And then we get to play knight, which is nice. Um, because I think we have a, we have a, a pretty clear turn here before you get to play the the prime turn. Really you have sad. a way to get two two mana out. That was a really good turn for you. That was really sad when all that happens. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> um, so I think this was a, a turn where I really screwed up because I I forgot that this was a copy of Thespian Stage. I thought it was just a an Urza Saga. Oh yeah. Um, so I draw flagstones, which isn't the worst because it is, is just another land drop. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I think we just start the beatdown strategy with, yeah, with the construct holding back the knight for wasteland on the on the saga, which obviously oh, yeah. isn't great. So, not a true Urza saga. And I believe I do it in your. I, I think I had a crop rotation in hand at this point. So I was either trying to bait you to try to wasteland it. Mm. Which uh right, basically trying not to make the first move until I would like choose to activate it. Yeah. This is where I, I messed up. <laughs> I messed up. This is the Hearthbean stage. And I believe here you just copy Forest to fizzle the wasteland, yeah. which is a very it's nice okay. play. And then you also get to keep the ability of create a zero zero colorless construct artifact token uh, on the on the forest, which is even like cream on top. I don't know why the end of your last turn, like it just for whatever reason, like didn't give me the option to make a construct. So like I don't know why it didn't let me, but that's why like I was tapping at the end. I think. Ah, interesting. Uh, yeah, I might have just like missed something, but who knows. <laughs> All right, so we draw stage, which isn't too bad, um, but we know you are now at four mana, uh, so I don't really want to path you and turn on that that prime time. So I think here we actually just get in with everything, because it is essentially a two turn clock, and if you don't play another blocker next turn, um, then you have to find some sort of like bog activation to to slow down the knight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is where like uh, knight of the reliquary in particular, and, like, Depths and Maverick is, like, really good against the Cloudpost deck. You can just, like, mm. go for... You don't even have to, like, mess around with Dark Depths. Just beat down with your bigger threats. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you, you sometimes just don't realize how big Knight is until you look at it and you're like, oh, I can actually attack with this as well. Like, it's it's pretty good. Oh, it's a nice, sweet card. And I, I think, again, like, you being stuck on that, that four mana um just allows me to know that you're not going to play the prime time next turn like you don't have like an ancient tomb in the deck at least for yeah. what i know yeah yeah just one mana producing lands at this point 
I, I guess you, there is a world where you could crop a forest into a cloud post and then untap. No, you're still one away and then play another cloud post. Two, three, four, five. Yeah, you're still, you'd still be one away if you did that. Um, if I crop out two cloud posts there and then play the glimmer post, like the cloud post glimmer would add three mana, so I could potentially get six mana there. There we go. Okay. But, but, uh, we did the math. I would, uh, I was still like far away. I think I was just contemplating whether I was going to crop rotation there at the end. Yeah. So this was an interesting spot because it was okay. My opponent now has five mana. Uh, they have a prime time in hand. Um, like, is there a world where we just have to path this reclaimer to try to get through? And I don't believe I did it here because I just wanted to see what I drew. Because if I drew into like a prismatic ending, I'd much rather use that and save the path for the prime time if something really bad happened. Oh, yeah, I like that much better. So I think we just copy, yeah, that. Because I wanted to see if we would actually also get the ability to create uh, tokens, but we, we don't. Uh, I, I don't understand those like, mechanics at all. <laughs> like, not to that extent, at least. Yeah, exactly. Um, so there, yeah, I, I tapped the flagstones for white. So I was like, I was, I was going to path this, but I was like, let's untap and, and see what we draw. Because I'd feel really bad to draw like a uh, prismatic ending. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like waiting there. So we hit another flagstones, which isn't too relevant. Um, but now I'm like, okay, let's just see if we can get in. Because maybe the reclaimer is just your way to, to not die this turn. Mm -hmm. Oh, the flagstones is not bad. It's just making night a little bit bigger right i guess it doesn't matter at this point so yeah i was i was thinking like if they have bog or something i want to do this second main so that i have a land to put into the graveyard oh uh, yeah okay makes perfect so, yeah, sense there's the crop and i was like oh okay here we go so i believe <laughs> you go down to two yeah um that was play like your flagstones. Like yeah, I remember that crop route for Bog was like my fallback back in case you were to answer that reclaimer. Otherwise, I probably would have chumped the knights. Yeah, cool. Okay. And this is like this is this is the big turn because so I was like, oh no. So, <laughs> Glimmer Post yeah, comes in. Point. Can't remember what exactly I searched up here. Probably Tabernacle, Glimmer. Yeah, I believe it was. Maybe even Glacial Chasm and uh, Tabernacle. See, I still have nightmares, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, Many so Tabernacle do. and another another Glimmer, which puts you up to a nice five. I don't know why, but like it just uh, my mind at this point forgot about Path to Exile. Like if you had another path, I would have just lost there. But I remember thinking that afterwards, but. <laughs> Um, yeah, I so, here I just, so one thing that I could have done here is that, um, oh, what was the play? I could have copied Dryad Arbor instead of the flagstones. Um, mm. I, co I copied the flagstones because it puts a land to the bin and allows me to search for another Savannah to get out of the deck. Um, and it makes Knight a 4-4. But if I copied the Dryad Arbor... Um, knight would be a 3-3 a three, three still, because just the flagstones are... Uh... Oh, yeah. I think you were thinking... Didn't you say you were going to like get another Dryad Arbor copy to make that... And maybe like sack to Tabernacle? Yes, that's right, yeah. So my play was get another Dryad Arbor and then sack them both to Tabernacle to put an extra land of the bin, but the flagstones wouldn't... This flagstones wouldn't have been there. So I, I don't think... I was trying to find a way to make the knight a 6-6 six, six to make you have to block the, with the prime time and trade. Mm -hmm. um, and okay. I, I felt like there might have been a way there if I, yeah, got two dried arbors uh, out and didn't pay for them. Because that would make a knight a 5-5 five, five, and then like a fetch or a, a wasteland off the top would have would have done it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember like... Yeah, maybe that would have been correct. I, I remember I had an endurance in hand in case, like, just just drink night, but like maybe that would have been more correct in hindsight. So he, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's tough. So here, uh, I didn't pay for dry, the 
I, I used the dried arbor to pay for the knight and didn't pay for the other creatures because I felt like four mana was exactly what I needed, especially if like green suns came up. Green suns for three is pretty solid. Oh yeah, yeah. So we draw forest, yeah. which isn't great, yeah. but um, there was a world where we could potentially try to get a dark depths going, just to see mm -hmm. how you are. Uh, how you work it out, but um, I think there was a, a thought of going for Dark Depths now while you're tapped off this mm -hmm. um, because Caracas of Primetime comes into play tapped um, and Knight of the Reliquary could have dealt with a Glacial Chasm. Um, it's... Uh... I don't know if I. I don't think I would go for a depths there because like the prime time trigger is still going to happen, and mm. then like there's a, especially those two stages on my end, like those are kind of like wasteland protection essentially, to like, the likely a Caracas chasm I would go search up, just the stages like kind of serve as like a defense against wasteland in those kind of spots. Yeah, which that's is a great point. Something, something to keep in mind. Yeah, definitely. So even if we do it now while your stages are down to make the 2020, you then have double stage up to cover like Caracas or uh, I guess for Glacial Chasm, which is pretty yeah. huge. Yeah, both of those cards. And you land, really. Yeah. So we see the attack and this is where I do make a mistake because Endurance is definitely a card that I thought of when you attack like this, especially with Bog already in play. Mm -hmm. um, because what you can do, do, of course, is allow us to block. We then sack a land and maybe get like a fetch land, make Knight a 7-7. Seven, seven, and then before damage, you can flash in Endurance, make this a 2-2. Two, two, and then, of course, the, the prime time just, just, just tramples over the night. Oh, uh, um, yeah. So you get Krakus and Glacial Chasm, two great cards against Dark Depths. And yeah, what I should yeah, have I done here... is blocked and then i think i i should have gone for uh sajiri step here the one oh we didn't actually have it in the deck okay if i did i could have gone to put sajiri step which means that endurance wouldn't have allowed the knight to have died oh uh, yeah keep it alive for another turn yeah but i feel like here we just go for wasteland um because there's a world where um, uh, yeah I think the, the play there was to get rid of the glacial chasm and then have the backup wasteland for the Caracas to see if if this not resolves if we can go for the duck depth plan mm -hmm. I don't know why I didn't like protect the chasm with the stage like I was saying just before Maybe I was a. Uh, oh, it's because you had no cards in it. I figured you didn't have like crop rotation, and so I wouldn't just die to like a depth there. Yeah, but usually that's wait, when the primeval titan is attacking and you know, like the cloud post deck, it's like usually they have like with Something's the stages up. there for protection. Yeah, yeah. Um and yeah, just doing it all then as well to make the knight a seven seven to be bigger than the the prime time. But of course, <laughs> endurance is here to save the day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> save so many days. Yeah, fantastic card. Big fan. <laughs> um, so yeah, we lose the knight, which is pretty big. Man, some intense games. But, uh... Yeah, I guess there's nothing you could draw there. Maybe it's another knight, possibly. Uh, yeah, it was, I... it was pretty tough. Crop wasn't too bad, depending on how you attack. Um, but then I think we see a... Yeah, copy for Wasteland here. I believe we take out the Caracas. No, I just concede. Um, but yeah, there was a turn. I guess the turn back, I, I wasn't sure if there was a world where we could go for, if we could take the damage from Prime Time, keep the Knight, uh, and then go for the combo somehow. But I think, as you said, with uh, Thespian Stage open on Glacial Chasm is going to be a bit too hard to get through. Yeah, yeah. I don't think there was a line there, to be honest. Mm. But uh, I, I like I don't like going for dark depths. I think that's too risky, like too costly. For yeah. now, you're red. Yeah. At least not like at the 
the the turn before like I attacked. Yeah, and it's tough because even something like Green Suns for Ramanap is just a really nice play as well to get back the Caracas or the Glacial Chasm or something like that. I think the key uh, thing would be to like just try and keep Knight alive, but then you also mm. can't like let Prime Time like live also. So yeah, yeah, it's a tough one because I, I was like maybe maybe he's just in a position where he doesn't have anything going on and he needs to get the two lands off Prime Time, but. Mm. I think as well I should have uh, looked at the lands you got from prime time before I blocked because I think if you get something like Cloudpost and Eye of Ugin, that probably means that you're just trying to find another threat because this prime time is all you have. Oh yeah, yeah, then they would just go for just go and try and kill me probably then at that point, if that was like the choices. Yeah. But yeah, they're really interesting games. A lot of back and forth yeah, and like the stages always make things a little bit uh yeah, interesting as well, which is cool. And like crop rotation battles between the two players. Just, yeah, yeah exactly. All, all, all great games, I thought. Um, but if I quickly look at your list, interplay tournament finishes. Is that the that's the first time you played, or I feel like I haven't uh, played against you all that often. Yeah, maybe I reckon three times. I reckon three times is pretty good. Um. So I assume against us, you bring in the, the fourth of Vigors, or some number? Yeah, I bring in, uh, I think I brought two of them in, just for like, if you had Sylvan Library, but mostly for like Box Diamonds. Yeah, And then nice. I bring all the Endurance in as well. Yeah, fantastic card. Plus, yeah, Ballista for like Mana Dorks, or, I don't know, I don't know why, yeah, I definitely brought in Ballista for like Sylvan Safekeeper, I think, thinking you might have that. Yeah, as just like a just-in-case. Yeah, yeah. Mostly um, endurance you... is the key thing. Yeah, endurance is so good. Endurance is so good against so many decks. Like being so flexible is just so huge. Oh yeah, the card's amazing. Yeah, like I can see you run a, a two-two split, and I think most Maverick players are running a two-two split. I just don't see it becoming less of a four of in any sort of green-white X deck that I play from now until the end of time. <laughs> <laughs> Like, it's great against decks like Doomsday, it's great against Delva. It's not that bad against, like, Band Control, where it's just a 3-4 threat that interacts with their graveyard. Oh, yeah. For my deck, it's, like, the fact that it's just, like, simply a 3-4 creature and can be a board presence, like, that's, like, the best quality of the card for me. Just funny. Yeah, like... against against uh, Delva, it just, like, it buys so much time. It's, it's insane. Yeah. Oh, I love it. And then... You said you uh, usually cut maps? Yeah, I cut the maps entirely. They're a little bit slow, and then... Uh, you, like, you, I know, like, usually the other green sun decks usually run collector roof, so that's always, like, a possible thing that could happen that makes me not want to have the maps. But yeah, they're yeah. usually, like, they're the, the auto-cut in any kind of those matchups where you really need the speed of crop rotation. And yeah, you'd rather just have like more instant speed effects like Endurance or Force of Vigor. Yeah, nice. Yeah, and it's also nice to be bringing in just more green cards for both of these as alternate cards to pitch. Exactly. But yeah, I believe you went on... Did you 4-0 this event? Yeah, yeah. Nice. Another one to yeah. add to the notch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was Very a... cool. Yeah. That was my best round of the most fun games, though, of that event. Nice, that's awesome to hear. It is a uh, yeah, the Lexi prelims are pretty cool. A little bit more uh, sort of high stakes than than leagues, but obviously not there in regards to challenges. But yeah, nice to be able yeah. to play some. Yeah, I try to play in as many as possible when they fire. Yeah, yeah. Um, in in general, how do you how do you find the matchup? Uh, it's. I think I would say I'm a little unfavored. Uh, maybe like sixty forty. Not but. Uh, give exact statistics, but I, I feel like it's slightly favored for depths. Just yep. because the the Knight of the Reliquary, it's just always been like the arch nemesis of Cloud Post. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean having the full set set of wastelands, the knights, like the reclaimers and crops are really nice. Um yeah, having I, access to needle is a little bit annoying. And just little like little increments of, of of annoyingness and disruption can add up. Yeah. And I find the uh the white depths with the their, due to their removal is more difficult than like the black versions with the discard. Just because I feel like I, I I like to be able to rely on things like needle or 
Reclaimer just sticking around, and I find that to be more difficult uh, against the green white depths list. Yeah, definitely, especially with prismatic ending. Like having an answer that can hit anything from needle to reclaimer is just really solid. Yeah, ending exactly. Because yeah, when I was playing green black depths, I think I was playing two trophies in the main deck. It's just kind of catch all removal. But oh. yeah, d hand disruption can feel pretty bad when they've already got you know two needles on the board, naming you know hex mage and and Despian stage or something or, or wasteland and an X. That nasty person running assassin's trophy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's 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 been pretty nice. Um, <laughs> nice. Well, a huge yeah. thank you for coming on. This has been yeah, thank really cool. Thanks I've for actually, having me uh, on. I've never gone through one of my games before. Maybe once or twice, but I feel like I should do a lot more because I feel like a lot, I learn a lot more from going through my games and matches than just playing and, and forgetting about them. No, yeah, it's good to like think and like review these kinds of things, look back. I, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I should maybe do that myself. Might be down to try that. Yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, do you want to give a quick plug on where people can find you? Sure. <laughs> uh, I am Tony Murata on Interplay. You can find me on Twitch, uh, into underscore play. Also a YouTube channel where uh, some recorded videos go. And yeah, I guess that's about it. Nice. Well, a huge thank you again. And uh, yeah, I'm sure I'll be in your stream shortly. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it. Nice. All right. Thanks, Tony. Yeah, thanks, Zeus. Bye.